You know, like I've even had people tell me they've eaten the thing that I'm looking for. Really? You know, yeah, when we were doing extinct, you know, looking for the extinct animals, um, of which we were, had success quite a lot. But I've had guys be like, oh, yeah, yeah, they're delicious. I'm like, what? Well, like, tell me where to find it. Like, you've eaten it and you have no reason to lie about this whatsoever. Like, please just help me. What was this that they did? That was eaten? regarding that caiman. Remember that yellow yeah. caiman? And we did find them. So that worked out. But literally, I remember we're walking through the village in day one before we even get in the canoes. And I'm like showing people these pictures of all the different species of caiman. And I kept pointing to the uh, Trumpa Largo Amarillo, the long nosed yellow one, right? And uh, everybody's like, yes, no, maybe one time. And then one guy's like, oh, those are delicious. And I'm like, oh, God, can we put this on Animal Planet? I don't even know. Like, I don't, <laughs> can you say that, that this thing is like, delicious? Endangered species yeah. that you're eating. <laughs> well, there was always these rumors of like these places where these uh, billionaires would fly into in China and eat like gorilla. Yeah. And you know, yeah. Have you ever heard of that, that oh, kind of yeah, stuff? Oh, yeah, I've heard about it. I believe it, too. Do you? I really do, yeah. I, I think that uh, especially... You you know, you say like especially with China where the Eastern medicine and the status symbol of eating tiger whiskers and this, that and the yeah. other thing. There's a status symbol of eating something that's forbidden and right. very difficult to acquire. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, China has so many billionaires now, I forget what it is, but dozens and dozens of them, right? Mm -hmm. Like if if that status symbol is important to someone with that much power and money, how are you not getting it? Yeah, that's a, what a weird culture where you your your status is based on eating something that's endangered. It doesn't even click in my head. Like I cannot so physically understand it. Like no part of me is like, "Oh, I get that. Like I really want to eat some tiger whiskers." Have we ever talked about the Bondo ape? Uh yes, you yeah. have. Yeah, I know you yeah. like the Bondo ape a lot. Yeah. Um big lion killing apes, right? Well, this is a big chimpanzee that Chim that yeah. lives in the Congo, yeah. which is the Congo is so incredible. It's like, God, what a, an insanely rich resource ridden yeah. place that's also a war zone. And being and being absolutely raped and pillaged by, you know, big corporations in the mm -hmm. Western world for resources yes. and, and minerals and I had Siddharth Kara on who uh his book I think his book comes out does it come out next week? It sums out j the end of January. Okay. Um, but his book is all about cobalt mining. In oh, Congo, interesting. And it's horrifying. I do want to read it. Yeah. Horrifying. 19 year old girls with babies on their back oh, yeah. who are hand chipping cobalt yep. out of the ground and then in inhaling all these toxic fumes and, yeah. and, and powder, this dust. And then that is in your cell phone. Right. That's, that's how the cobalt that yep. gets into your fucking cell phone. That's at your Apple store. It's nuts. It's the new blood diamond, yes. right? It's the new... And it's funny because I feel like the whole blood diamond thing and, uh, you know, there's been lots of these things, but it it all sort of went away because it got exposed. But I feel like no one's talking about the inhumane things that are taking place for our modern conveniences. It's one thing when it's a luxury, like a blood diamond, right? right. Or, or whatever. But when it's like, oh, well, I can't live without my iPhone, you know, then right. it's like we're willing to turn a blind eye to it. It's like people yeah. choose not to accept it because it's it's part of their life. Let's just think about how many people who consider themselves social justice warriors and they do this complaining on a phone that's made by slaves. <laughs> totally. It's yeah. So they're crazy. they're they're literally tweeting or texting or whatever yeah. their complaints on a thing that is contributing to the thing they're complaining about. It's well, the contributing to the worst version of it right. in humanity right now. Isn't it which crazy? Is really crazy. I mean, it's like literally human trafficking. So, in the book, does he actually go into the Congo and yes. witness this? And oh yeah, he yeah. took video footage. He oh, came you're kidding. On. His story is so compelling. Oh, I must listen it's to so it. So and he talks about it with such passion because he worked on this for years and years yeah and risked his life to obtain footage and to get access and to go to these what they're, they're supposedly you know ethical minds yeah and he's like this is all horrible it goes all of it is tainted yeah all the cobalt that we have all of it is is at least in some part coming from these you know what they would call I mean, it's it's basically just the most primitive version, people in flip-flops with hammers, yeah. chipping it out of the ground. What's well, extreme poverty. Yes. Right? And it's, and not, it's more like slavery. It is. Calling it extreme poverty, I think, is not quite uh, accurate enough. They call them artisanal 
minds, which is like hilarious because well, it's like anytime you, you about... slap that word onto yeah. anything, it's it's fa it's fun. Oh, right? it's artisanal. Yeah. Oh, great. I think <laughs> someone's making pottery somewhere. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. But, so back to the um, the Bondo ape. Sure. Is that well? How? What is? Because I know there was some controversy behind that, and there's some people that sort of denied its existence. But then Carl Armand got photographs of them, and they, they obtained um, skulls that were a chimpanzee skull that had a crest. Large. Yeah. Well, they also had a, a like a mm -hmm. like a crest, mm -hmm. like the same way that a gorilla does. My understanding, and this is not something I'm super familiar with, but there's no denying that they existed. Right. There was this insular gigantism that took place within this group of chimpanzees. There was heightened aggression. You know, that's all like known and documented. But it wasn't a new species. It wasn't a distinct species. It was sexual or, or, or rather natural selection that led to these animals being different and isolated and turning into larger, more aggressive chimpanzees. That's my understanding of it. But that would, would that also... Um make their skulls different it can do you know because like okay well it, oddly enough we have a skull yeah of a it's very cool that's, <laughs> this is made by uh shane against the machine who's a guy on the instagram who's an incredible artist he's, oh cool he's made a, co a couple of pieces for the podcast too oh, right. the difference is with this skull versus what they think the bondo ape skull is that the bondo ape has like a bone mohawk right down through the center here. yeah yeah like a gorilla does sure so you know Sexual selection over time can evolve for anything, can adapt for anything, right? It's why peacocks have the silly tail they have. It doesn't help them fly, right? It's only sexual selection. It's being bred for. So you get a bunch of chimps stuck on an island, stuck in a region, and the females decide for whatever reason that a bump on the head is sexy. Mm. Okay? Now, every chimp that has a slight bump on its head is being selected for by the females to reproduce offspring. Fast forward 15, 20 generations, maybe 200 generations, whatever, they all have a crest on their head. That is how evolution begins, because now you fast forward millions of years and the sexual selection has been selected for over and over and over and over, mm. and you're starting to turn into a new creature, a new organism altogether. I, I, if I'm not... Uh, I don't think I'm incorrect here. I think this, the crest indicates enormous mandible muscles. I think, because the muscles yeah. attach up there. Yeah, I think Makes that's sense. what the crest is for. Yeah. Like, because that's how it is with dogs. Sure. Like, have you ever noticed the difference between a dog that's castrated and a dog that's not fixed? In One temperament, things, sure. The size of their heads. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. Like, my dog is a, a golden retriever, yeah. the sweetest dog in the world. Yeah. But he has a pretty big head. Yeah. And it's the muscles in his head are big. Sure. Like on the sides of his head because he has his testosterone.